was a Thursday morning, February 27th, 1975. Overnight, a massive fire in a Bell switching station had knocked out telephone service for a huge chunk of Manhattan. 170,000 people woke up to find their phone lines had gone dead. Not only was it a disaster, it was a high-profile one. Recovery would have to be swift and decisive. And since this was New York City, it meant that the restoration would be in the media spotlight. Recognizing that public communications were critical, AT&T promptly brought in expert documentary filmmakers like Albert Mazels to tell the rebuilding story. Vice President of New York Telephone, Lee Oberst, was put in charge and he took a huge risk, publicly committing the company to full restoration within three weeks. Five days before that deadline, he began calling it the miracle on 2nd Avenue. Now, AT&T was no stranger to disaster recovery efforts, but this was on an unprecedented scale. Whole teams of Bell Lab scientists were needed to evaluate the damaged equipment and propose solutions. Western Electric factories all over the country sent new switching systems, and over 4,000 phone workers were brought in for cleanup and rewiring. Would they make it in time? It's a fascinating story, and one of the best made films in the AT&T archives. Here is Miracle on 2nd Avenue. Smoke continues to pour endlessly from this building at the corner of 13th Street and 2nd Avenue. In fact, it seems a bit worse now than it was a short time ago. The smoke, white and gray, is just blowing east on 13th Street. Trouble began early today when flames erupted in the sub-basement of the Bell Systems building at 2nd Avenue and 13th Street. And before long, 170,000 phones in Lower Manhattan had been knocked out. If it's possible to believe this, this fire is getting worse. You may hear the sirens in the background as more equipment arrives to battle it. About a half hour ago, 2nd Avenue became a wall of black smoke, wholly enveloping it. You couldn't breathe. You couldn't see. If you try to look east down 13th Street... We asked Bob Van Zandt of New York Telephone about the scope of the fire. We're calling it a major disaster. It's, uh, the extent of it, we don't know. But something like 170,000 at the present time are out of service. It seems very doubtful that this fire is going to hold at five alarms. The next progression in the fire, in the alarm fire system, would be a far wide call. I asked John DeButz, AT&T board chairman, if this was the worst disaster in the Bell System's history. The standpoint of fire, yes, it is the worst we've ever had. We have had hurricanes that knocked out more telephones but covered a much wider area. But from the standpoint of a single disaster such as a fire as this, it's by far the worst we've ever had. There are 200 men battling the smoke and the fire and the fumes and the flame inside. There have been no more reported injuries since the earlier 50 who were treated for smoke inhalation. But I feel very bad for the men on those cherry pickers who are still just a few feet away from the window squirting streams of water in there. We know that this area is burning. These cables were red hot, deep red. Battalion Chief Joseph Riley said that the smoke and the heat and the damage were beyond belief. He would say that 98% of the first two floors avoid using these exchanges if at all possible. 254, 473, 475, 477. Some emergency phone service is being set up in the areas and crews, we understand, are being brought in from out of state and out of town to assist in rebuilding, which is really the word to be used rebuilding this system once the fire department completes its job. Right now we have mobile units coming in from New Jersey, New England, Pennsylvania, and Ohio to provide emergency telephone service for such places in the area as hospitals, police stations, and some other strategic locations. What progress are you making, okay? Well, 
Well, you know, nobody's been in there yet, so you can't yeah. tell. All I'm saying is nobody's given up on it at this time. No, 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 way way around there. Bill Ellinghouse, president, New York Telephone. The same kind of uh, story we were talking about. Bill Sharwell, New York that Telephone. The Bell system uh, was really going to be the only thing that was going to help us here. We need a frame. We need a cable walk restored. Lee Oberst, New York Telephone. Jack Mack, Bell Labs, Bell Systems Research and Development Unit. Bill Brady, Western Electric, Bell's Manufacturing and Supply Arm. The Bell System team gathers. I have a suspicion that we've lost a couple of floor of panels. Well, maybe somewhere in the First steps, evaluate all information. Okay. We certainly want uh, people who have uh, good experience and you know, Delegate right responsibility to the right people. Uh, power uh, and any other, and fire damage assessment. I think we ought to get to Columbus and see what they can do with regards to um, anything that's on a pallet, near a pallet, near a ship. Find and order new equipment. Western may be already doing that, but we ought to make sure. Check and double check. But well, that seems to be the best solution we have for the present. I bet you would do it. I don't think there's ever been anything like this in the system. Seventeen hours after the first alarm, the fire is under control. The first inspection teams get into the building, one of the world's largest concentrations of telephone equipment. Prior to on-site inspection, three contingency plans are developed based on certain assumptions. The first, if the entire building were lost. The second, if the main frame were destroyed. The third, if the switches and relays connecting residences and business phones to the world were destroyed. Everybody felt bad about it. Anybody who's been in a phone company for as many years as we have feels bad about it. There isn't a telephone man alive that doesn't have a doesn't have something in his throat when he stands outside a building as big as this one and watches that black smoke pouring out through those windows. You know, you work hard trying to keep an office going and providing the best service possible, and then you see it going up in flames, it really, it's heartbreaking. At the same time the first inspection teams were assessing the damage, the vanguard of an army of New York telephone and Western Electric workers began the massive cleanup. thousands of gallons of water to mop up. Specialists from Bell Labs arrive at the scene to advise and provide technical guidance in such areas as salvaging and cleaning equipment, structural damage assessment, switching transmission, electrical power and call rerouting. Meanwhile, 170,000 residential, business, and coin telephones are out. More phones than in the entire city of South Bend, Indiana. Using nationwide telephone network flexibility, AT&T long lines and New York telephone shift calls away from the affected area. Damage assessment supports earlier assumptions. The building's first two floors are destroyed. The main distributing frame, a total loss. 31,000 switches to local phones out of service. 208 cables in the vault must be pulled and replaced. It's a great disaster because of the amount of service that's lost to the people. It's just an impossible thing to live without them. What can you do? Uh today without, without using the phone. I don't think anybody can, uh, can really get by a day without picking up the phone once or twice or so. You know that you've got 100,000 customers who are out of service. You know that nothing like this has ever happened before and you automatically appreciate the enormity of the restoration problem. And your mind, you're only allowed to think about that for a very short period of time and then you immediately shift into gears of what should we be doing to get ready to fix this thing right now. We've got two to three weeks to accomplish this and we're going to have to go all out to do it. All right, if there are no questions, then let's go. Let's get it done. Let's get it done fast. A major problem, 
material and logistics. A main distributing frame takes six months to manufacture and assemble. New York's needs are immediate. Here's how Bell's planned system, Bell's nationwide integrated resources work in this case. Immediately, AT&T coordinates a nationwide inventory to determine location and quantities of spare equipment. Within hours, Western Electric people locate a new main frame at their Hawthorne, Illinois plant, awaiting shipment to another Bell operating company. The order is changed, and the frame is en route to New York by air. Western halts all parts shipments to operating companies. New York has priority on anything it needs. 10,000 repeaters ship from Massachusetts. 90,000 feet of cable from Illinois and New Jersey. 12 million feet of frame wire from Buffalo, New York, all rushed to the disaster scene. The mere integration of the system itself allowed us to get equipment onto the job much faster than we can. Where else could we go to a contractor and ask them for the type of help we required in such a short time frame? We're working 12-hour shifts on it. We have all different types of people here with us. We have Empire City Subway, New York Tell, people from out of state with us, too. All working together. 100% effort with all men. All day, all night. Seven days a week. It'll go on that way until it's finally completed. The task of pulling out the destroyed cables begins. For six days, the cable drums slowly revolve the wrong way. Miles of burned cable are removed from the vault. We can't call home either, you see. So we can understand how they might feel. So this is why we work in the way we are. You have a dedication to your employer, so everybody bends a little bit. And that's what all the families are doing. They're bending to help out. Is the third floor going to be set to accept the main frame within three days? Well, let me put it another way. The third floor has to be set to accept the main frame in three days. The main distributing frame, the link between cable and customer, 30,000 pounds of steel, 270 sections going up and up. A hundred thousand people are without phones, cut off from the world. Emergency coin telephone vans are rushed in from nearby Bell companies, including West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Within days, more than 400 emergency phones are operating from 32 strategic locations. The telephone company immediately put a bunch of phones in the house right next door to where I live. So all I need is dimes, and I'm in contact with my children and the grandchildren just by going out of their house. I'm Italian, and I was brought up very strict, and it wasn't proper. My mother told me to call men. So the phone's out. Okay. okay, New York Telephone Company, Information Emergency Service. The day after the fire, telephone executives worked with the city government to organize an emergency telephone message center. The city says, give us the operators. We'll supply the messengers. And a volunteer service delivers the messages. 8,000 a week. Bell System Pioneers, a community service group, seeking ways to help in this crisis. They visit people who are isolated without phone service, the handicapped, the elderly, the sick. Oh, very good. Pick up the phone, I got in touch with the outside world, and they could call me, and this way is nobody. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid the equipment's all in the sale yet. Afraid we take it out New York that. Telephone President Ellinghouse inspects work in progress. Okay. Everybody's been just super in the whole job, and we've been coordinating uh, with Weston to get the frames up and going, uh, to get the testing going, and, and with the engineers to, to get equipment into the building. Uh, other people in Bell Laboratories from Columbus, Ohio, bringing their people in and, and working around the clock 
It's just been a super effort by everybody. And obviously, a big part of the success we're having in making this restoration in the time frame that we set for ourselves was the cooperation and the capability of the Western Electric Company. So that main frame upstairs sprang up out of the ground like a mushroom uh, because they were able to commandeer the equipment and the facilities, the ironwork from another job and bring it in here. The main frame is assembled. A job that would have taken six months from manufacture through assembly takes four days. Something comes up in your head as you go along, it ought to be... Meetings, to, to coordinate, to stay in touch, to exchange information. We may never have another fire, but at least we won't have to go through this again. The process of replacing the cable begins. The drums now turn in the right direction. The people are just enthusiastic and, uh, and they just want to get the job done. But it's really amazing. It's coordinated. People know where they're going, what they're doing. And uh, I think the, the, I think the cooperation has been excellent. These are the 42 cables that we pulled out yesterday, and we put, put them back in last night. Places that we have open now, right now, you know? Can you give me some idea how many we have now? In other words, we've got to stay at about 120. We have 11 cables going in. Okay, nine of them are completed. Okay, we have two more to go, and they should be completed by tomorrow morning. All right, have you got guys ready to set up on those test price locations? Ready to go now? I've seen my family once and since this thing started. Well, right now, these fellows are trying to uh, <coughs> clean up the relays in the indicator frame so that we can begin to test our equipment, which Western Electric is trying valiantly to restore. But the relays were smoke damaged, and they're very sticky at this point, and we're cleaning them up with a chemical that was recommended to us by Bell Laboratories. 208 cables. Within each, 2,400 pairs of wires. The monumental task of identifying and cataloging each wire begins. 99. Turn next. I'll have to leave them out. Look for a light. Finally, the cables in the vault are joined to the main frame. The amazing thing to me has been from the day we, we first went in a building, which was Thursday night, Jack and I yeah, toured the building. And every day you come back, you know, the more and more progress leading to that to the end when we get all of the lines back in service. Well, Bruce, we're getting down to the deadline now. Uh, how about the horizontal blocks? Are they all up yet? All the horizontal blocks are up now. They, right now, the two teams are working. The Western and the plant department is working, running in cross connections and also running the blocks for us. The Western end working on the bottom and the telephone company on top, right? Right. That's great. I mean, it's been a real cooperative effort. 80,000 connections and cross connections tying together eight and a half million feet of wire to the customer on one end, to the world on the other. A new tool, one of many to be plugged in for trial under fire. Innovation like this is the result of constant interchange between operating companies of the Bell System, Bell Laboratories, and Western Electric. Oh, it's like a big movie production, like a Cecil B. the most picture. You know, so many people around, hard hats. I've never seen anything like it in my 25 years with the company. The team is here, and we're going to do a job, and we're doing the job. I can't believe it. Start the test frame on our watch. I can't. Is it running? I can't. Tell me when the DST comes up, Willie. It's been a long three weeks, but it's been fruitful. But I'll just say one thing. Fantastic. And I'm with Jimmy in the manhole. Jimmy, you still there? 25. Tell OJ to send Tony, right? How will I feel when the phones are back in service? Much better.
telephone is very important to correspond. It's like a visit to me. You know, I can rap. Six Twenty-three days after the fire, the phones are back in service. 3,500 Bell System men and women, work that would normally take years, accomplished in three weeks. Hello? Hi, Lou. Hello? What could you feel except the... Uh a sense of tiredness and a sense of uh, real satisfaction that have them pulled off uh, well what everybody has begun to call a miracle of second avenue. 